and we will begin our amazing hour. We are very fortunate to have four young people coming from Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and over in Ethiopia uh, as a part of our panel today. And while we all strive to reach as many lives uh, through our programming at Asante Africa, what's even more important are the stories and lives behind those numbers. So we're very honored today. I will start by introducing our, myself and then briefly set the stage for the programs that we offer. And we will move right into the introductions of our young people very, um, very promptly. So, Anne Claire, let's go ahead. For those of you who might not know much about me personally, I am an electrical engineer by training and I've spent most of my career in Silicon Valley. And Asante Africa, Africa came into existence because of a very powerful Tanzanian woman and Kenyan woman who had a dream of education in rural communities. And I joined forces with these two powerful women to bring Asante Africa into being. For me personally, success for the organization as well as all of our young people is that they are at the center of global change using their voices and working from within their communities directly. Next. The way our programs operate is we work from the premise of every child, every person deserves to have the knowledge and skills to chase their dreams and to be a change agent. So for us, the way our programs are structured is they are interlinked and they are very age appropriate as young people grow from about the age of 10 up through 24. Our, our mission in life is to prepare young people to be able to tackle whatever challenges come directly into their world, as well as not just survive, but thrive economically and to be the catalyst for positive change. Now, the way we do that is we offer academic support from class four all the way up through university, but we also offer life skills called the Wazesha Vijana program for the middle school middle school age bracket youth. And then as young people go into high school, we prepare them with livelihood training. Our goal is that as they exit high school, they have the tools in their toolkit to choose their own path, whether it's academics, whether it's securing a job that they choose, or whether it's starting a small business. Today, you are going to hear a, a variety of stories about how these young four people are making that happen in their own world. There are two elements you will hear about today from our four panelists. One is called Pay It Forward. We, we as an organization passionately believe each of us is a learner and each of us is a teacher. And each of us can share our new knowledge and skills with those that we love and are around us. We also have a model called learn, do, and teach. It's not enough to sit in a classroom or in a training session and just absorb knowledge. Once you put it into practice with your hands, your own knowledge gets deeper. And once you have to go out and teach another person, your knowledge gets even more deep. So setting this stage, let's not waste any more time listening to me, but let's start with the introductions of our four young people. And uh, Anne Claire, if you will take away the PowerPoint for just a moment with the, the images of our four young people, that would be great. 
Have we lost Isaiah? Okay. We will introduce you to three of our four while Isaiah in Uganda comes back to join us. So Rose, wave. Whoops. Rose is a brilliant young woman. You'll hear her story. She's, sit, she's based in Kenya at the moment. And then uh, Nicholas, can you just wave to us? Nicholas is, is sitting on the other side of the border of Kenya in Ethiopia. And Asha is Tanzanian, and she's actually sitting in Denmark today. So Rose, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask you to introduce yourself first. And if you can show your video, that would be great. And we're going to pull up a PowerPoint as well, just uh, for the first few seconds while you begin to introduce yourself. Rose, over to you. Maybe. Okay, let's. Let's go to our next person while we manage technical difficulties. So Asha, who are you? Good evening, everyone. My name is Asha Mauli. I'm coming from Namanga, Tanzania. And uh, I'm a university student at Sokoine University of Agriculture, Morogoro, Tanzania. But currently, I am at Denmark pursuing my daily program, which is an extension of my degree. But also, I met to Santa Africa in 2013 when I was in standard seven at primary school because of my exceptional good performance academically. I was lucky to join this journey for Santa Africa. Today, I'm here with you, with youth leadership and governance as your speaker. You are all welcome. Fantastic. So next, let's, in, let's introduce you. Hello. <laughs> we know what time it is in Ethiopia. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Nicholas Lanyasunya from Kenya, living now at Ethiopia. I come to know Asante Africa Foundation through the late former country director, Fred Lesakale, who gave me a chance to attend my first summit in the year 2015. My area of experience is gender rights and peace development. Welcome. Thank you. So let's begin. Let's let's just start with our questions while we try, we work our best to secure our other two guests. Um, I am hearing and Claire that when you show the slides, they are not showing up uh, to the viewers. So let's maybe when we do show them, let's just use uh, not, not full viewing mode. Maybe there's something going on there. So Asha, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the challenges you had and how you came to know Asante Africa and what are some of the skills that you've developed that you are now starting to use in your own life? Thank you. First of all, the challenges that make me in the South Africa to be a family is I come from a difficult environment, I can say, because I could not afford my school requirements, including the school fees, because of our life, as I come from a family of a single parent, which is my mom, and also have health problems. 
So it was a difficult time, but glory to God that South Africa come and lighten my path and my journey start. And currently I learn leadership skills from Asant Africa, which helped me to solve different problems in my community, like the self-awareness among youth, especially girls at university and secondary schools, so that we can, we can avoid the unexpected pregnancies and all other consequences that may lead to, to failure in our dreams and goals in our life. But also I'm studying animal science at Sokane University of Agriculture. One of the challenges that brought me here is my society, which is the Maasai society, that they're practicing um, animal keeping or pastoralism in a local way. So I take it as a challenge. And when I met in South Africa and I was able to, to gain that uh, skills and education through them, then I'm going to change my community by using my skills so that they can produce in economic way so that we can satisfy ourselves and improve our living standards. Great. So Nicholas, what are some of the challenges you've struggled and how did you come to know Asante Africa? I came to know Asante Africa in the year 2015. So some of the challenges I struggle to find solution for them. Uh, I have developed leadership skills. Leadership skills has helped me to implement gender rights and peace and development across the Eastern Africa border, specifically between Kenya and Ethiopia, bringing peace and stability. And my second why? skills I learned. Yeah, please go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I have learned communication and collaboration skills, whereby I have helped young, uh, young women to access education facility to conduct a mentorship program for their future life challenges. Yeah. Great. And and as you've developed these skills, how are they helping you just in your day-to-day -day world, Nicholas, for yourself? How are you using these skills for yourself? So I am using these skills, uh, especially the leadership skills, have uh, gave me hope to stick to my programs after winning a Peace and Development Award from the UN in Ethiopia. Fantastic. Well, while uh, I am being told the other two panelists are working to get back online, so we'll just continue our conversations with Asha and Nicholas. So let's go, let's stay with Nicholas for a moment. Nicholas, you are from Kenya, but you are living and working in Ethiopia. And what are some of the challenges that you were seeing in the communities that you believe you are going to be the change agent for and that you are working to be the change agent for? What are some of those issues? So uh, number one is I want to achieve peace and stability in Eastern Africa region to promote the threat between uh, the countries of Eastern Africa, particularly Kenya and Ethiopia. And why? Uh, so that we can attain Agenda 2030 of the UN for sustainable development and a peaceful world. I guess as a, as a man, you, I know that you have a heart for the rights of the girl child. And what is it that's inspiring you to want to be an advocate for the girls? Pardon? What, what is it that you are enjoying and appreciating about being an advocate for the girl child? Why is that important to you? Yes, this is important to me. Um, empowering and empowering young women 
by supporting them with learning materials and even mentorship program to undertake their career pathways. But why is it important? It is important to attain gender rights for both gender for any country to develop. Great. Yeah. So Asha, let's talk, let's go to your world. Um, you have seen many challenges. Um, what are the challenges in your local community that have inspired you to do what you're doing that give you the confidence to create solutions? Thank you so much. First of all, I come from Maasai community and uh, the main economic activities is pastoralism, which is done in a local way. And uh, the living standards of the people is poor. People cannot afford their lives despite of, of having good wealth, great prestige of animals. But because they are keeping in a local way, the animals, when the climate change or when it is summer, there is no pasture, the animals are dying and the people, they are starving. So after seeing that challenge when I grow up, I decided to become an animal scientist so that I can help my community. That's why I decided to take a degree of animal science. And now I'm in Denmark um, practicing dairy production as it is a developing country. I will learn a lot and a lot and I will be able to change my community life and educate my fellow farmers at my home place. Thank you. And how do you see what you're learning in your dairy production program, how do you see that supporting your community when you go back home? Okay, first thing that I've learned is you have to you have to make sure you have a surplus of pasture because the climate change is a global circumstance. It's not only in Tanzania or in Denmark. So after seeing that, I'll go back and advise my farmers to make sure during the rain season, we make a lot of pastures in, in our local ways, but it can save us despite of, of not having enough infrastructures, but we can make pastures, we can make food for animals by using our local available materials so that we can save animals and uh, improving our income and our lives as usual. Fantastic. As we are going through our conversation for the audience, if you would like to submit questions for the panelists, do not hesitate to put those in the Q&A chat. And so, so let's, let's just stay with you, Asha, in the moment. Um, the youth are the future and I would love, and we all recognize technology is a very important component in our lives. And how do you see it for Africa's youth? Uh, how are they embracing technology and innovation? How is it helping support your own success? And how do you see it progressing with time? Okay, thank you. First of all, technology, and the digital skill in general it is important to every youth because we are living in the world that change every day. As youth in a certain field, you have to know in future what will it be mm. and to prepare yourself. And all this you cannot find in, in our analog environment, but using the technology. Mm. By taking example of my own, I come from a community that a woman has no voice. But currently, I've become a leadership in different position after seeing, after seeing the role models in the internet and around the world that the women are capable of doing different things, different great things. And so as youth, the internet helped me a lot. As you speak currently, Atlantic Africa empowered me with the laptop and I can get a lot of skills concerning my dairy technology skills, concerning my degree program, concerning my leadership skills by using this. And also in Africa, the technology is not well developed for youth. 
Most of them in the in rural area, they don't have access to internet. And so they just make them to live low because they, don't, they are not explored in the world. So I could advise other panelists and uh, our attendees to support youth acquiring the digital skills so that we can help each other. Thank you. I guess a follow-on question to that, Asha, how do you see technology coming into the world of animal science, dairy production, uh, a good green pasture? How does technology fit into all that? Okay, thank you so much. In my community, we may use three hours to milk only 20 cows and produce only small amount of milk one liter per cow, but by using technology, we have machines for dairy production. We have the machine for milking, which operate fast and accurately, but also conserve the animal welfare. So in my faculty, technology is more important. As we all know, the farm activities, when they are done in a local way, they are always high. But if we try to to use the machine, it simplifies a lot of work, like mixing the feeds for animal, like cleaning the farm, also milking. So it is very, very important in our farm activities to have technology because it saves time, it improves produ production, but also it saves also animal. Thank you. Fantastic. So Nicholas, let's come over to you. How is technology and innovation supporting your world of teaching and mentoring the young people across the border? How are you using technology and how do you see it? Technology and innovation have helped me to address my own experiences through school club society using projector and laptop to reach out to many audiences. Yes, and? Now, uh, point number two, technology has helped me to be updated about the current human rights and the solution to problem affecting young women in the world. Mm. At that point, uh, this uh, technology has helped me to reach out to many people, sharing ideas with them, especially those the who are the front players in terms of fighting for human rights for girl child? At least to be uh, to work with the current situation in the world. So what I'm hearing is that it's making you a global citizen, and yes. it's giving you access from from with knowledge and information to help you stay the course. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And how do you see being able to expose other people in your world to technology so they can benefit? So I encourage young people to use technology a uh, means to solve problem affecting young girls in school and those even who are facing uh, challenges in the society. Mm -hmm access the kind of information to solve their current situation. It's, it's very challenging. Do, ch do young people in Ethiopia have access to technology? Uh, it is very challenging, especially the internet situation is not that stable. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, hostile communities in especially region five. You cannot assess, uh, maybe a you cannot conduct a dialogue from the warring communities to solve uh, conflicts there. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. So I am observing probably like many of you that we have Isaya from Uganda with us. Can you hear us, Isaya? Hi, everyone. Hi. 
Would you like to just introduce yourself and tell us uh, where are you sitting and what is it that um, you are using your skills and knowledge for in Uganda these days? Uh, my name is Seminga Isaiah, a student at single, single secondary school Chamringa. I stay in Kasanda district, Chijuna sub county, particularly in Chitongo village. On this panel, I'm share with you how I used, I'm, I'm using the knowledge to conserve the environment because I saw the problem of environmental degradation in our, in our community. So I'm share with you the knowledge and tell you how do I overcome that problem. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe could you just expand on that and tell us a little bit about the skills that you've been learning over, over the time with our programs and what are some of the challenges that you specifically are trying to solve? Uh, the skills, one of them is resilience. Mm -hmm. so I'm resilient that even if I have a problem, I can wait the time until I overcome that problem. Mm -hmm. Another skill is problem solving and identification. Our community identified the problem of environmental degradation. So I, I that problem. And one of the solutions is planting trees which have been cut down making charcoal briquettes, charcoal briquettes using agricultural residues like miniasics and maize cobs, clay soil and the others. Ah. Another skill is confidentiality. I'm confident enough that I can speak to a big number of people. So I gained that skill from Asante Africa Foundation. Ah. A leadership skill, also I gained that skill from Asante. Meaning since I, I joined my secondary, I have been a leader at school level, even in the Asante Africa Foundation School Best Club, I, I acted as a leader in 2020. Okay. So those are some of the... Fantastic. I guess um, one question that I have for you, Isaiah, uh, why did you decide that you wanted to focus on deforestation um, within your community as the as the problem you want to really tackle? The reason is that uh, environmental degradation, mostly deforestation, has led the community to receive low amounts of rainfall hence lowering the agriculture of the people. And remember that most of the people in Uganda based on agriculture. So cutting down trees reduced the amount of rainfall and they, were, they, all, they all always become poor because of, because of that receiving low amounts of rainfall, which could support them in agriculture. Fantastic. So Asha, let's just go back to you for a moment. When we, when we think about paying it forward, that is a core value of ours. And how have you over the years paid it forward? And what does it really mean to you personally? Thank you so much. After being in a journey with Asante Africa, I have learned one thing from them. <laughs> They teach me, learn, do, and uh, support approach. This mod, it prepares young people to, to learn how to learn and practice what they have learned and teach others. So around my community, I have so many people which are not able to, to, to gain this knowledge that I have. 
And so by being a leader at university, I've been able to conduct different summit with my students and able to conduct different charities around Morogoro municipals to orphanage centers and uh, prisons for women so that we can give a small thing that we have because we all know we cannot we can we cannot be in the same level the challenge that i have another person do not have so i decided to share the the small thing or the big thing that i hold so that i can make others happy that is how it means to be and uh, as i grow up i learn how to improve my paying it forward more so that the coming generation they learn also from me not not only giving the support but also the person that i give the support i show them the importance of being supported so if i first if i support you you just go also and support others even in a small amount that's how it means to me fantastic thank you so nicholas i know that you have recently won an award peace development could you just tell us a little bit about what's behind that award and what does pay it forward mean to you in the context of trying to manage conflict and peace and how do you bring other people into it yes uh to me Paying forward means empowering others to make an impact in their lives. I apply it in spreading peace across uh -oh. technical difficulties in progress. So this is, we're projecting a picture of Nicholas holding his award, his recent award given by the UN uh, in Ethiopia. Are you back with us, Nicholas? Yes. Okay, we lost you for a moment. Maybe you can just share, can go ahead and continue. Yes, I also encourage you to join Sports for Peace Forum mm. to promote harmony between people and foster national development between the two countries. And how do you bring other people into your vision of change that you want? Yes, I share to them ideas and collaboration matters and support girl child to stand up with them, their needs. Is it working? Is it, it is working. I think statistics shows uh, that was recently conducted by the UNICEF within the border. Uh, parents' awareness toward their children's education has increased by 63%. Wow. Yeah. Say that one more time. So I think uh, this is working. Uh, Statistics, the sum of the statistics conducted by the UNICEF recently shows that uh, men are able to stand up with their sister's need and increase parent awareness about their children's education in the school by 63%. Wow. Huge, big. Thank you. Okay, Isaiah, what does pay up forward mean to you? And how are you bringing your classmates and your community along to want to be a part of it? To me, pay it forward means sharing the knowledge that I acquired from Asante Africa Foundation with my fellow youth in the community. So I apply pay it forward by encouraging the youth to use the the knowledge I give them that I go, I get from Asante to act to work with me in conserving the environment. So I do encourage them to stop cutting down trees, planting trees, use all, using papers for packaging like that, such that they stop using the things that can pollute the environment. 
So I think it would be really interesting, Isaiah, for us to go back one step. Could you just explain about what your charcoal briquettes are made out of and how you have used technology and innovation to come up with different types of charcoal? In my business of charcoal briquettes, I have two types of charcoal briquettes. So I have that one, bulbs and the clay soil. And the other type is made from the cassava flour. So I, ha I have applied the technology by making research on how different youth research about, do research and how they apply their technology. For example, I made a search of the machines that can help me to produce charcoal briquettes using electricity because right now I use manual. I don't have those machines. So I made a research about them. And the, one of the examples is charcoal briquette extrude machine. So that machine uses electricity to produce charcoal briquettes. And how do you how do you currently make your briquettes? Uh, the process of making my briquettes, I burn the coffee the basic cobs and the six in a metallic drum. I cover them such that they get little air, and they change from from their color to black. Then I crush them and mix with the clay soil or cassava flour, then I start rolling. So that is the local method I use, but there is, there is the machines that can help me to produce that charcoal using electricity. But that due to the fact that I don't have money for purchasing those machines, I use the local ways of making the charcoal briquettes. And do you have classmates that work with you on this or do you do this by yourself? Sorry? Who is it that helps you make these briquettes? I, I only work with a few youth in, in, at school because I'm, I'm at school. Uh -huh. So I work with some students in producing the charcoal briquettes. They help me and we work as a team, then we produce. So one question that I'm seeing in the chat is everyone is curious how you make your own personal money and what do you use the money from your projects on, your pay it forward projects or your small businesses? Isaiah, let's start with you and then we'll go to Asha and Nicholas. Maybe. Isaiah, how do you make, what do you use your money? How do you make your money? And then where, uh, where do you sell your briquettes? And then how do you use your money? I sell my briquettes in the community. And I have, I, in, on my customers, I specified them whereby I have the permanent customers and the other customers. So I produce the charcoal briquettes on contract. I sell to the permanent customers and the other ch little charcoal briquettes to these other customers who are not permanent. Then the money I get from uh, my business, I use some in buying the scholastic materials like uh, books, uh, pens, pencils like that. Then I save the other money because I want to develop my business. Okay. And what is your, you know, one question I haven't asked you guys, Isaiah, what is your long-term dream for yourself? My dream is to become a civil engineer under construction. Okay. And then you're going to use your savings to move toward that dream? I, 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 I'm saving such that I use that money until I reach my dream. I... Great. Let's go to, let's go, let's reverse our order. Nicholas, how are you making small money and how do you, um, 
uh, how do you uh, use your small money? Yes, my source, uh, how I can generate my money for my basic need, day-to-day no? -day basic need. I normally uh, teach some of the school within the borderlines from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, to raise my funds to pay rent, uh, pay my basic need, and support God's education. And do you have any side hustles that you use? Yes, at home, I used to participate in livestock market in Samburu. Ah, fantastic. So there's, yeah. a com there's a common theme around agriculture and livestock on this call. Asha, what about you? How are you, how are you saving and using your money? And how are you securing funds to support yourself? You're muted. Thank you so much. Apart from the loan that I received from the government support via the, the loan board, Hesleb in Tanzania. Also, I, I am a hairstyler for my fellow university students. So I gain my money for using in that small business, business of mine. But the other money I save and the other money I support my mom in educating my, my siblings because they are also studying. And the, the money is the one that I use until I accomplish all the process and reach here Denmark because it requires the money for processing visa, for processing your passport. Yes. So it's just like that. And all these are becoming possible to me because I've been incorporated with entrepreneurship and budgetary skills from different summits prepared by Asante Africa that are called the leadership and entrepreneurship incubation. Thank you. Interesting. So we haven't touched on the financial management, which we all know is such a critical skill. So for all of the listeners, we have just been joined by Rose. I'd love to give Rose a moment to introduce herself. And then we are gonna to go to the questions that you have been asking. If you have certain questions that you have not yet asked, um, please let us know, put it in the chat. And we are absolutely wanting to uh, give those to the panelists. So Rose, and, and Claire, maybe you could just pull up the picture of Rose. Rose, give us a brief introduction. Who are you and how did you come to know us? And what, how, uh, what skills are you using right now? Okay, I'm Rose Cheng from Kenya. I came to know us in Africa through a friend who introduced me as a janitor. Uh, during that time, I did not have enough money to continue with my education. So through Asante, I was able to complete my education and support my kid. In Asante, Africa, I learned, I gained different skills. First is digital skill, entrepreneurial skill. Yeah. And what are you, and how are you using what you're learning so we were just talking a bit earlier about technology and the power of technology. How has technology supported you with your vision of providing a good life for you and your child? Through the skills I gained, I was able to secure a position in a private company as head of curriculum development, where we develop digital content for teachers and learners. I'm also using technology to help single mothers to raise up to their feet to support their children by doing online businesses. Yeah. Fantastic. And then, um, so let's just ask you a question that wanna, we'll start with one of the questions that a guest is asking. Each of you knows Asante Africa, but what would you think about what is a way that we are partnering with you not uh, for you to chase your own dream? 
and wrote, anyone can answer. Why don't I open the door for anyone? Okay, thank you. I see the question is asking that, what is the most important way that Asante Africa has partnered with you on your road to fulfilling your dream? To my side, Asante Africa lightened my education pathway because I didn't know how my, my education would look like because even my, my, my fellow youth in our environment, they didn't go to school. It is not because they don't, they don't want to study. It is because of the difficulty of the environment. If you, if you love support, then you, you, can get, you cannot get money for buying a school uniform or books or your school fees. At that time when I'm studying, we are required to pay the school fees. So it will be difficult for me. So Asante Africa, first of all, empower me with a leadership, with a scholarship of which they, they just sponsor me with everything that I need for school. They make sure I have a better environment at school. Not only getting the education, but they are becoming like co-parents to me, I can say, because they, they join hand with my mom, which is, a, is my parents, and make sure I have all skills that are required for a youth so that I can change my environment, so, so that I can be confident enough despite of my past stories. And so they, they just make me more confident in attaining different summits. And also they just empower me and feel like I'm able to do anything around the world without any limit. Even the sky is not a limit to me. I really thank Asante Africa for this because they usually tell me you have to you have to we are we are giving this but you have to multiply it so that you can save your dreams so that you can save your future that is how to me thank you thank great you. and what about rose or isaiah or nicholas what would you say has helped you chase your own dream what are the skills or the way we've worked with you to help you to support you. Okay, Me. thank you. Let's start with Rose, Isaiah, and then Nicholas. Go ahead, Rose. Okay, yeah, thank you. First, I was able to, to be open-minded. They helped me to be open-minded to see there's much you can do with the digital skills. Through that, I was able to join uh, online, uh, online courses that helped me improve my career. So with partnership with Asante Africa has been a great help to me and the society. Thank you. And Rose, if I remember correctly, um, you, are, you are, the certificates that you are holding are actually globally recognized certificates, right? Yes. And what are they? Who, what are your global certificates? <clears throat> I have two certificates on technical support and uh, bytes and bits of computer networking. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Isaiah, let's go to you. <clears throat> to me, as Santa has hoped to me by giving me the knowledge like I, I, I gained the knowledge of ideation where I got the idea of starting this small business using the little money I have. And also I gained the, the skill of saving money, the little money I get from my parents and I use it to start up a small business that can help me to reach my goal. Another skill is budgeting. I can budget for the small amount of money I have saved in my pocket and do what I'm supposed to do. And I know that this knowledge that I gained from Asante will help me to achieve my dream of becoming a civil engineer. Fantastic. So what I'm hearing you is we are helping you put tools into your toolkits so that 
when the time is right, you can pull those tools out and use them to chase that dream that's in your heart. Yeah. Yes. Nicholas, there's a question here very specifically. Are you able to use technology in a way that helps the girls that you are working with stay safe? Are you able to use technology to help report cases or, or to protect the girls' rights and safety? Yes, um, I have been able to use technology to address the common challenges affecting young girls, specifically in school and even in the society. Mm -hmm. The human right, the uh, Democrat, to promote respect of human rights. Yeah. Great. It has also helped me to reach many audiences by sharing with them my ideas, uh, educating them through using a projector and a laptop. I use to borrow from friends to make sure we comply with the digital world. So one question, well, so let's uh, go to the teacher here. There is a question here, and I'm gonna rephrase it just a little bit. I we all know that your parents are very worried about children accessing dirty content or bad content on the internet. How do we balance the use of technology and information with keeping our children safe? Maybe Rose, since you're training teachers and learners maybe you could share with us what do, what do you what do we do how do we do it okay before introducing technology in schools we introduced a program called child safety online this is to create our awareness to both parents and learners on the both positive and negative effect of technology mm. when they are well equipped with knowledge now we can start the program okay yeah. And actually, isn't all the content that we are offering in schools um, in an offline platform that's been approved by the ministries as being safe and related to curriculum? Okay, it is, in, it is approved by the Ministry of Education. And we have the idea that even if a child does not have his own a laptop or smartphone, you will al always in one way or other will access the content from neighbors or radios or television. So we have digital tools are wide, not only uh, laptops and, and phones, but even through the radios and televisions, that, uh, children can get dirty content. So we create awareness on all devices. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a great answer. Do any of the other, do any, any is anyone else wanting to um, share? The, the question here is technology can be a threat to our younger generation, especially regarding moral issues. How can we reduce that risk? Would any of the rest of you like to share your thoughts on that question? Yeah, I would like to share a question. Uh, we have to promote programs that uh, can help people to develop moral standards of the society by showing uh, things that are uh, according to the, uh, the norms of the society and the ethics. Mm -hmm. Yes. So to promote good decision making. Yeah. Mm. Isaiah, Asha, what do you think? Uh, to my side, it is true technology has become a threat, but for us, before introducing technology to our youth, 
we first encourage to determine their values and their morals. So based on that, they will stick on the positive things that they are going to be brought in technology, with technology. And, uh, and because we, we are building the foundation, a great foundation, as you, see my, as you see me now, I coming from my local environment, for the first time I own a laptop, but I didn't do anything that is nonsense because my, my, mo my role models, they just incorporated my mind with positive things only. So I think one thing that our youth should know, when you are, you, you are, you are explored to a certain environment, you have to stick with the aim, with the goals of that program. Only that. So don't let us don't be afraid to 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 empower our youth with technology because we have a chance to teach them the positive side, which has a great great impact than the bad side, and we can make it. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Isaiah. Any any comments on the technology question? There's another question, if not. On that question, to me, I think the youth must be encouraged and empower them by, and tell them about the negative outcomes of using technology on the other negative side mm. and show them the the things that are in use using technology when they are only following the positive things that can help them to develop their lives so that is it so it can be a tool for good or it can be misused and we want our young people to have good skills for making decisions for themselves is what i'm hearing you say So let's go with one more question before the, each of you share your closing comments. The question is, is coming from one of our listeners and you are being commended that you are all taking on worthy and big challenges. The question is, how are you getting other young people or community members to join your efforts? Is it easy to convince? And how do you help get them to take the challenge up with you? Who would like to go first? So it looks like it looks like Nicholas and then Rose. So I would like uh, youth from my area to join me to fight for the rights of our young women and empower them in whichever way they can. Encourage them to have confidence that they will uh, reach the desire of their dream. Do you have resistance from your male friends and colleagues to take up this challenge? Yes, I have a friend from Bomet who will help me in terms of uh, sharing ideas how we can solve this uh, situation. But do you get resistance? I think the question is, do you get resistance because it's such a patriarchal society? Yes, I, I would like to, uh, to, to put this in resistance. <laughs> yes, many people sometimes are against that, especially our community, Samburu. Yeah. Yeah, to fight for the rights of women. Right. Yeah. So let's go to Rose. How do you respond to that question? How do you bring other people along on your journey? Okay, first, 
I usually work with single mothers. So far, I'm working with three single mothers. The first step is to make them know that the journey is not that easy. So it needs resilience all the way. Then I prepare them by giving them small capital to start online business, which um, my hope is to make them one day join online classes to acquire certificates so that they can improve or they can earn at least a job to support their family. So first I keep in mind that it is not easy, but commitment and hard working will make them achieve. Yeah. Fantastic. Isaiah or Asha, any comments on that question before we go to closing? Okay, thank you. It is not easy to convince youth or anyone that has certain mode of living to change for his or her own benefits. But at the moment, it is not easy, it is not easy. For me, this is my biggest challenge. But one thing that I usually do is participating in that activities that I'm encouraging them to do. For example, in my community, you cannot tell a Maasai to, to, to prepare a food. They just say, oh, we have many, we have many cows. How will it be possible? But if you, do, if you make your effort alone and show them, that we can do it, we can do this, it is easier. If they see you are doing, um, we call it in our Swahili language, Shambadarasa. We, like, we, you have to prepare a field and show them this is how it's working, not by words. Because they are adults and the adults, they are liking to see something that is practically, then you can convince them. At university, it is not easier to tell a girl, a girl that, you have to focus with your studies. Don't think the good life will come just by dating a rich man or what. It is not easy. But one thing that you have to do is to be an example, but to also try to explain the both sides that if you do this, you will end on this. And if you do this, you will end on this. So you have, this is my way of convincing them, but it is still a challenge. But I will make it, uh, I think I will make it. Thank you. Tama Kawaida, it's just life. Isaiah, are you, how are you bringing along your colleagues and friends? Do you have a secret answer that we need to know? In my community, I do encourage the youth to practice doing different things, use the knowledge they have to do, to bring different ideas that can help them to overcome the challenges they are facing. And sometimes it becomes hard, but as I'm in, as when I'm in my business of making charcoal briquettes, I call some youth to see how I process the charcoal briquettes using the little knowledge I have and that I gained from Asante when I'm not using any single coin and I get money from the business. So I tell them that even if you don't have money, you can do something that can help you to improve your life. So that is it. So what I hear all of you sharing in that answer are two things. One, you're leading by example. You're not, you're not lecturing, blah, 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 blah. You're leading by example and you're being a role model and you're going slowly, kidogo, kidogo. You bring them, you keep taking baby steps of success. That's, those are the things that I've heard. So this is an incredible conversation. And while we had a few technical challenges, I would like to just say I'm incredibly proud of each of you and the leader that you are. You know, it used to be we talked about future leaders, but what's awesome about you guys is you are leaders today, wherever you are in this moment. And it's a journey that we are all on. And I would like to ask each of you 
to share with you with the audience your closing thought if they only remember one thing what would you like them to remember so isaiah let's start with you and then rose nicholas and asha mm -hmm. uh, to me <laughs> according to research i have made i have seen that in uganda in East Africa, Tanzania has the biggest number of people who are who we, we in poverty, and that is around 21.9 million, followed by Kenya with 17.6 million, then Uganda with 15.6.80 million of people living in, in poverty. So that means that people, mostly in the villages, they First, it had to afford some things like a shelter, food, like, for example, two meals a day. And most of them, they are jobless. This is the root cause for a degradation, where most of the youth decided to cut down the trees such that they get some money. So, I, must be done is sensitizing the youth such that they come and no like coming up with different policies about environmental degradation finding out more organizations the learning government organizations like asante that can empower the youth and encourage them to stop degradating the environment another thing i i think it might, must be done is to empower the youth with some little amount of money that can help me them to start up different businesses and giving them the knowledge on how they can use that money like budgeting and saving such that they improve their lives and reduce the on the large number of people who live with poverty fantastic thank you so let's go to Rose. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Supporting women in technology is not only it helps to unlock their potential, uh, to unlock their potential, uh, to to it helps to it can help to unlock their potential, uh, improve their standards of living and social progress. So if we help women to improve, in, to be innovative and to use technology to improve their life, it's like we are helping the whole community since women are agent, agents of changes. They will improve their own lives and the other people around them. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. And Nicholas. Yes. What would you like this community to remember today? What is your closing thought? So I think what I would like this community to remember today that I will encourage everyone to promote gender rights and peace development and the respect of the rule of law and human right to achieve sustainable development for the future of a better world and educating children's transforming world. Fantastic. All right, is that, are you finished? Okay, Asha, last but not least. <laughs> Thank you so much. My dear community of this webinar, this evening, I'd like to share with you one thing. Let's incorporate the leadership and the self-governance to our youth, because our youth is our responsibility. In order to build a better tomorrow, we must make sure our youth are in a safe condition, in a safe environment that they can guide themselves and guide others. Because don't forget, we are the two sides of the same coin. Means that I need you, you need me. Thank you. <laughs> so in conclusion, 
I, again, just want to echo how proud I am that you represent Asante Africa as an organization, but as a community. Each of you, long after we're, long after Asante Africa has left your school or your community, you have you are sinking the roots in your community, and you are building all of these individuals in your world. The pay up forward and the ripple effect is phenomenal. And we're very honored to have had you speak your truth today and to share your story. And uh, Anne Claire, if you'll just bring up the closing slide. If anyone on the panel would like to have a deeper conversation with any of the panelists, any of our country directors, myself, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to make that connection. And um, we would love for you to join us on the journey. Um, tomorrow is the International Day of the African Child. So in honor of all young people who are of African descent and on the continent of Africa, it is a phenomenal future in, in front of us and we are full of hope. So Gioni and Gemma, Kazi and Gemma, Farahi Friday, everyone, please go have a phenomenal rest of your day and evening. And in Erna's uh, way of celebrating, let's give ourselves a round of applause. Thank you all. Have a great evening. And if the panelists would just stay on, everyone else, go have a phenomenal day.